So, we are going to discuss now product architecture. So, what is product architecture? Product architecture is related to the arrangement of functional elements of the product. Any product will have certain functional elements. So, how those elements which are in the form of a physical entity finally, how they are arranged. So, what is should be the guideline in their arrangement? That is all about product architecture. That entity could be different parts of the product, it could be different components or it could be assemblies or some assemblies all depends upon the type of product that we are trying to design. So, that is all about product architecture. The architecture begins to emerge during the concept development stage in the form of sketches, function diagram or early prototype development. So, it is actually start developing right from the beginning and the architecture of any product is important because ultimately the usability of the product and its functionality depends upon the overall architecture of the product. How an architecture is created? So, first what we do? We create schematic that is we create diagrams, it may be line diagrams, it could be freehand sketches and these diagram will represent the constituent elements or parts of the product. So, some sort of ability to draw diagrams is important. It could be diagram can be drawn on a computer, those who are familiar with graphics software and their use or it could be drawn by hand. Then once I draw the different parts of the product or different elements of the product, then we create a rough geometrical layout that is how the different parts are going to be laid or then they could be joined together to create a complete product. So, schematic where we draw different constituent elements or parts and then arranging them. This is how architecture can be built. Let us say we are interested about the elements of the parts of a cold winter garment. First we have to now think about the various constituent elements which would be needed for developing an extreme cold winter garment. So, make a list first. In the list first that will come into our mind is should I go for a single piece design or two piece design. Now, it will be say that the list is that it could be two piece design that is there is a jacket and there has to be a trouser. So, the first is these are the two constituents that is upper part which will cover our body and the lower part which will cover our body. Next the jacket should be hooded. So, hood is also part of the jacket so that the head remains covered. The other thing we will need is pockets. Pockets are used to keep utility items. So, it must have pockets. 
how many pockets and where they should be located that will come later on. Elastic band for tightening the jacket that is what is also required. The other item could be velcro to be used as closer because we have to close certain places of the garment so that there is no scope let us say for the wind to penetrate or wind to enter. So, the other thing is zippers. So, these are the list and we may need a reinforcing fabric layer. So, these are the list that we need for developing a cool winter garments. And we can, so for different products the list is going to be different. So, first we make a list, these are the items that we require and if some of these items we need to make a certain sketch, we can make a sketch of this also. Let us say layered waterproof jacket. In that case, the key components could be, so it is a waterproof jacket which can be used let us say under water by the divers. What we need here? Waterproof breathable fabric that is one component that we require. So, we have to think of a fabric which is not only waterproof, but also breathable. Then fully sealed seams, the seams have to be completely sealed. Since a garment is made of different pieces or different which are different patterns which are joined together. So, seam has to be completely sealed, so that water cannot really penetrate. Then waterproof zippers, then bonded hood brim, adjustable cups, side jeeps for ventilations if required, so that we can ventilate draw cord with cord locks at hem. So, you should have a cord so that we can tighten the jacket and that has to be cord lock. So, these are the items which are key component for developing waterproof jacket. So, you make a list. So, this is the first step of making a list of item that we now we create a rough geometric layout. We can make sketches of those parts also and now we go for a geometric layout can be created in two or three dimensions using drawing, computer model, physical model, using cardboard, foam etcetera. So, that means, you want to now convey your thought to a third person, how? By creating a model. So, either it is a physical model where cardboard, foam, this can be used or it could be a 3D model on a computer screen or if someone can draw it 3D or if required 2D whatever is required, those things can be made and this will convey the design idea to a third person. So, the communication of the idea becomes very uh, easily understandable to the other person if we can ultimately develop a model. So, the layout helps the team to understand the overall functionality of the garment from the user perspective. Once the model is ready in front of you, if a physical model is there, one can look at it from different angles and one can think about its utility from the user perspective. So, it helps. 
also whether the interfaces among the elements are feasible or not. So, the when the different components are to be really put together, whether the interfaces will be working properly or not, that idea also will come. The other thing is basic dimensional relationship among the elements. So, that there is a sense of proportions in terms of the type of element that you are going to use. So, whatever element to use, let us say it were a simple shot, we use buttons. Okay. Now, if the buttons for a simple shot, what should be the size of the buttons? If I go for, because buttons of different sizes are available, from very small, maybe 6, 7 millimeter, also large buttons are also available, which could be maybe 1 inch also. Now, in a shot, we will not obviously go for a very large size buttons. So, when we draw them, then it also helps us to understand whether the proportion is correct or not. So, the many way this is going to help before we really get into developing the real prototype. Let us say here there is a layout is of extreme cold winter garment. You see this is what the items are list is given on the left hand side and the right hand side the sketches are given. These sketches is going to convey that where the jeep should be located, where button should be there. If I look at it these things now, see there has to be a button here, there is a jeep over here. So, all these things which are part of the overall design, this should be visible to the other members of the team. And hence, the layout of the different components, how they are laid in the overall design is going to help. Here we have a velcro or here we have elastic band at this point. So, there is reason behind all this. The person who has thought of the design, he must have certain idea and he can, he or she can then explain to what is the reason behind it. But to convey where it should be located, a sketch is going to help. So, this is what is actually layout of the design that has been conceived. Then for waterproof jacket, this is the kind of design someone can conceive and the idea is that you can convey your thoughts to others, to maybe other team members. This is another geometric layout of a space suit. So, that is the step. Now comes what are the different types of architectures which are practiced for the design of textile products. Now, these are one is single or multi piece products, detachable architecture, unisex architecture, reversible architecture, layered architecture. So, we have a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 types of architecture which are generally practiced 
in textile products. Now, we are going to discuss each of these one by one single piece design as shown here on the right hand side you see an uniform which is a single piece design. So, single piece design means trouser and the shirt they are not separate from each other it is all a single piece this is called one piece design. Advantage is eliminates agent penetration through the openings because it is closed from all sides. So, possibilities of any external agent to penetrate is going to be minimized allows quick donning and doffing that aspect also has to be seen so that a person who is going to use it you should be able to doff and don quite fast. So, accordingly the opening has to be generated somewhere created somewhere and it should be very fast to open and very fast to close. Simplified seaming and sewing in joining fabric pieces during garment fabrications it also helps. So, these are the three advantages and the disadvantages if we will make a list no option to open the jacket pant for quick release of heat stress or body chill. This is the only problem that we cannot take out the jacket or the pant separately we have to remove the entire garment. So, it is since the openings are not there the heat stress can develop quickly. So, these are the disadvantage of such design, but this is mostly used for chemical biological clothing system design or you want the agent not to penetrate the human body. So, it is entirely covered maybe by an impermeable fabric. Two piece design is another alternative where two piece design means there is a trouser and there is a jacket. So, this is a two piece design two piece design will give you what it allows quick donning and doffing for quick release of heat or body chill. And allows exchange of defective jackets and pants. So, if the jacket is defective I can remove it I can take out another new jacket and may be still working. That means, they are independent of each other. So, therefore, if one of them is not functional I can throw it and take a new one the other part may be still functioning. So, it needs closure system to seal the opening between jackets and pants requires more seam sealing and sewing. So, this is the advantages and there are disadvantages. The other advantage we get is that when this two piece design the restriction that is imposed by a government on the user restriction means what restriction in terms of the movement of the limbs. So, the restriction imposed on the movement of limbs will be much less because it is a two piece design. So, two piece design is an architecture which is also in use. So, knowing the benefits one has to think whether I should choose for two piece design or will choose for one piece design.
The other architecture is detachable architectures that it can be detached easily like a collar. This is also available that we can change the collar. So, there could be multiple collars, the rest of the shirt is exactly same, it does not change, but the collar can be changed. Bibs or reflecting jacket, they can be worn on the regular uniform or regular dress and they can be removed also. So, detach also a kind of detachable architecture that you can put it on, you can remove it also whenever you require or whenever you do not require. The other detachable is that it design something like this pant, this trouser, this part. Here the kind of seam which is there or the joining which is there that the lower part can be removed, this part can be taken away and you are left with the short. Similarly, we can have jacket also where the sleeves can be removed and we have a sleeveless jacket. This kind of design is also there. The benefit is that when you do not need the sleeve of a jacket because it has become quite warm or it is not so cold, uh, we only need the sleeveless jacket in those situations the sleeves can be removed and it gives more freedom, it reduces the heat stress. That is the advantage. Similarly, if I remove the lower part of the trouser, it will also reduce heat stress when the weather is warm and people will prefer to use the short. So, this is a one kind of architecture that is the parts can be separated. The other architecture is layered architecture. This is, is becoming very common nowadays like multi layer garments, clothing layers with different specific and functions, specific requirements and functions can be dropped and drawn for various protections, which could be environmental protection, chemical, thermal, ballistic protections. So, it is a multi layered garment and the layers can be removed depending upon the environmental need. So, that is called multi layer garment see the whole assembly or is designed in such a way that there is a layer by layer and these layers are can be removed or they are one can put on one layer and then he put on the second garment on the top of the previous garment. So, this is a kind of multi layer garments, cold weather garments if you look at them, it is a layered architecture. There is a base layer for moisture management, then there is a middle layer for thermal insulations and there is an outer layer which is water resistant soft cell. So, many cold weather garment especially jackets are having three layers with three different functions, moisture management, thermal insulations and water resistant shale or wind resistant shale or you can say the uh, they resist the snow so that is the it is a layered architecture. The other layer architecture is sports garments that could be one layer which is wicking close to the skin so that pores which are high active pores persons can going to generate a lot of sweat, liquid sweat and the liquid sweat has to be taken out from the skin to the surface of the sports garment. Therefore, 
Wicking is essential property for the layer which is close to the skin. The other important layer too will be elasticity is important. So, it is elastic in nature and can protect from wind. It has a breathability part and water resistant soft shell. So, it should be breathable. It will protect the person from wind, especially in cold climate. If the sports is being played, the temperature is low, then wind protection is important there. The elasticity will give the person freedom to move his or her limb very fast in different angles because when somebody is playing, the body is bending, twisting, and there is different configuration of the body, the person is running. So, therefore, elasticity of the garment becomes important, it is more important for layer 2. So, that is a in sports garment, especially high activity sports, this is very important. Freedom of movement, high visibility, wind protection, as it is stated here, all of them will give you optimum comfort because comfort becomes a function of freedom of movement visibility, protection from cold wind and resistance from raindrops. Heat protective garment is also made as a layered structure, where there is inner layer acts as a thermal barrier, it could be polyester fabric. The middle layer the thermal barrier again, PTFE membrane as a moisture barrier and the shell protection against conductive and radiative heat. So, there is a shell, there is a middle layer, there is an inner layer. So, a layered you know, structure is created and each layer has a distinctive function to play. So, this kind of layered architecture is used nowadays. An example let us say bullet proof vest, it is also a layered architecture. There is a layer where ceramic is there, first layer, then there is a Kepler fabric, composites, then there is a aluminum alloy over here. So, these three in combination ceramic textile, polymeric material and a metal aluminum alloy in combination is going to protect the person from the bullet. So, such kind of uh, architecture is used for developing bullet proof vest. So, it is a also a layered architecture. So, there are many more examples, there are many products for layered architectures can be used. So, whenever somebody is trying to design, he has to think whether a layered architecture is going to benefit the functionality of the product or the performance of the product. If so, he can or she can think of a design where layered architecture can be used. Next is another example layer architecture of diaper or incontinence product. See if you look at the diapers which are used by the babies or by the patients or by old people, it has a layered architecture also. See there are 1, 2, 3, 4 layers actually. Top layer is called accusation layer, it, it collects the liquid. The second layer is distribution layer. Uh, this layer part job is to distribute the liquid. The third layer is basically the absorbent core. It is going to absorb the liquid and retain it. And the fourth layer is the barrier layer, which is an impermeable layer. So, this layer is the outer layer of the incontinent products or the diaper, so that the liquid cannot move out. So, in the end you should have a barrier layer, that means 
such a product diaper is having a layered architecture and this layer architecture is also a necessity. From there we go to the next slide, other thing is another interesting architecture is reversible. So, many of us uses government which are reversible in nature that is you can both sides the inner side and outer side of the garments can be used by the user. Like for this garment the inner the outer the outer and the inner side has two different colors. So, a person can use the same jacket with two different colors one day he can use the part which is dark green and the next day he can use the reverse side also. So, generally it will give a feeling that you have two jackets but actually you have one. So, this is a kind of reversible type of jacket. So, that you can reverse it and still use it. Next is the unisex architecture that is you design in such a way that both men and women would love to take it and wear it. So, it does not discriminate like t shirts is a unisex design t shirts are available which can be worn by anyone both male and female. So, this is unisex design. It features loose fit, looser fittings, yet still tailored pieces that can be worn by many body types. Materials are denim and casual net neutral fabrics. Generally, these are very loose fitting products and pieces that can be worn by many body types, different body types can use it. So, therefore, they are not only unisex in terms of architecture, the size is also such that it can cover a different size of the body that means, it has to be a stretchable in nature. So, this is what is unisex architecture. Now, besides this that could be modular architecture. We are very familiar we all know the modular kitchen. We know about the modular sofa sets. So, modular is a concept which has come and this is being used also. The modularity is a very important aspect of design activity. Now, in the modular architecture one is that it can have different interfaces that is each of the interfaces between the physical elements is of different type from the others. So, there is one single piece to which other elements physical elements which are giving different functions they can be joined. So, there are different interfaces like let us say the example is a winter jacket suppose there is a winter jacket which has a detachable hood. So, the hood has to be joined with the neck of the jacket. So, that interface neck and the hood is one interface where they can be joined together by, by a zipper that is one interface. Similarly, we can have a removable sleeve, the sleeve also can be removed removable. So, there is another interface at the sleeve and that could be inner fleece that is the inner part of the jacket can have an extra fleece fabrics which also can be attached. So, such kind of designs are there where we can say such designs are basically a kind of modular architecture and the interfaces are such that in one particular interface only one item can be attached because this interface is meant for that item only. 
at the interface of the food only food can be attached, interfaces of the sleep only sleep can be attached, nothing else. The other architecture is same interface, that is interface you can attach any pieces. The interfaces are same type, there is no single element to which all the other parts are attached. The assembly is built up by connecting the parts to each other by identical interfaces. An example for textile is let us say modular carpet tiles and a huge tent fabrics. Suppose I want to have a very huge tent which is 30 meter by 100 meter, as just an example. Obviously, I can't, we can't make a 30 meter width fabric and 100 meter length on a loom, it is not possible. Loom has a capacity, length can go still 100 meter, but width cannot be 30 meter or 40 meters. We want to have a very huge tent. So, what we do? We have smaller pieces and the pieces of the fabric, ten fabrics can be joined together and these are interfaces between the fabrics are exactly similar in nature. So, and they can be any pieces of certain size can be joined. Modular carpet tiles when as a huge area has to be you know, carpeted like let us say airport that is a huge area. So, we have carpets or smaller sizes which are then joined together. So, interfaces are exactly similar in nature. So, that is a kind of same interface type, but modular architecture. Benefit of modular architecture is it can create product variety. Products with modular, modular architecture can be more easily varied if I think of a modular architecture. Like for carpet, I can have carpet pieces of different same size, but different colors and join them together to make a beautiful pattern. Chilean garment, a large variety of products can be created by combining pieces of sleeves, colors, color of different colors. I can create a large variety of garments by joining pieces of sleeves or collars which are of different color. The rest of the part may still remain same and we can have a large variety of products which can create appeal, aesthetic appeal to the customers. So, that is the advantage we have and there is also possibility of multifunctional that clothing with different characteristics in different body areas to have different functional features. So, that way also we can design it that with the modular architecture I can change the different parts to have different functional to have different functions like different permeability characteristics different flexural properties in specific area of the garment. That advantages will be there in the case of multifunctional type of architecture if we go. The other thing is component standardization. It refers to the use of the same component in multiple products. When a part is used for one widely useful functional element, then it can be standardized and used in several parts like buttons, zippers, strings, they are used for making garments. Now, when you know this could be used, then we can standardize their size zipper, their length can be standardized, strings also. Therefore, when a part is used for one, one widely useful functional element, so zipper is used for as a 
closer closing element all when you make thousands of or millions of pieces of trousers so they can be then standardized so component standardization is another important aspect then button size can be also standardized and it can also happen when several manufacturers products use same component from same supplier so standardization of the component is very important so that the same component made by one manufacturer can be used by multiple uh, users or multiple manufacturers of the garment and the supplier of the buttons of zippers or strings if they standardize uh, if these are standardized then the supplier can produce according to the standard and then send it to to different uh, manufacturers so this standardization is possible if we go for some specific type of architecture and design one of the thing is example is lining fabric which is used in the uh, in your in the coats or blazers or lining fabrics are used or in the blouses also so since everybody is going to use the lining fabric we can have a standardized specification for lining fabric which can be used by many many uh, manufacturers with this we close this particular session so this is all about the architecture of textile product so there are few architecture we have discussed and uh, generally these are the types which are used so architecture in a way means how do i arrange the different functional element of a product there are many textile products which are highly standardized already and therefore there is not much scope to do something new but still possibilities could be exist but when it comes to technical you know products then there is a need to look at this thing because we do not have standardized well established designs so there it is very very important but for others some products are already existing for a long long time for centuries so that the designs are standardized and their geometrical layout the different components are already almost fixed in those cases the design can be changed if there is an change in the raw material characteristics if there is a new technology which gives me a fabric which is having different property or there is a new fiber from which we have made a fabric which gives me a different property then there is a chance there is a scope to improve the design for those highly established products which are being used by many many people okay with this let us close today's session thank you